Well, uh, my name's Charlie Hall, for you that don't know me, and I'm here today to talk to you about my final year presentation, which is the treatment of Laos soil sediment laden stormwater runoff with the aid of flocculants, coagulants, and geotextiles. Um, I've actually just passed around the geotextile that I've been using. Um, it is quite porous, as you can see. But until recently, flocculants and coagulants have not been permitted within the Canterbury region, uh, making for a virtually impossible task when dealing with uh, the or trying to meet the regional council uh, regulations of 50 milligrams of suspended solid per litre. The traditional method for dealing with these sediment laden flows has been to use uh, large sediment retention basins. Uh, the implementation of flocculants and coagulants has allowed the size of these basins to be reduced. Uh, the purpose of this investigation was to determine whether these basins could be reduced in size again uh, through the implementation of geotextile filtration fences. I've decided to focus on the Laos soils due to its abundance within New Zealand, its relatively small particle size, its high erosivity, uh, the fact that and the fact that it can be held in suspension for extended periods of time with uh, within bodies of water. Due to time constraints, I'll be skipping over a lot of the background information. So if you have any questions, then do feel free to ask at the end. Three experiments were undertaken, two lab and one in situ. Uh, the two lab experiments consisted of a laminar and turbulent flow trial. Both of these experiments consisted of four tests uh, where the flocculant was left to act for a specified period of time. These times were four, two, one, and half an hour. For the turbulent tests, the stormwater runoff flocculant mix was left to act uh, within the 50 litre treatment uh, basin container, which is in the yellow in that bottom figure just there. Uh, once this rest period was finished, the valve was opened and the runoff flowed through the testing apparatus. Four samples were taken for each test, two from the treatment basin and uh, two for the final, uh, for the initial and final flows out of the outlet. For the laminar experiments, the stormwater runoff flocculant mix was poured directly into the apparatus. It was held here for rest time with a plastic seal that was placed over the outlet. Again, uh, test with, uh, samples were taken. This was two samples from the outlet for the initial and final flow. The in situ test was undertaken at a construction site in Christchurch with a pre-prepared sediment retention basin. The sediment retention basin uh, consisted of a mud tank and fall bay, which then flowed through a pipe where it was dosed with flocculant by the electronic dosing device. This then flowed into the main basin. The main basin was split into four sections by three geotextile fi uh, filtration fences. Um, and the outletting system was a floating decan, which allowed the skim water from the top to be transported to a nearby natural stream. Testing was taken in seven different places, one in the fore bay, and then before and after each geotextile filtration fence. The first test measurements began once the mud tank had fully drained, and the second one was conducted 10 hours later once the fore bay had completely drained. The main measure of success for these tests was uh, whether there was a reduction in the total suspended solids, or TSS. The measured results from the laminar and turbulent flows, uh, turbulent tests, showed significant re reductions in, these, in, in the TSS. These initial results were used to calculate theoretical reductions for the TSS in a sediment retention basin. And that's what you can see in the figures up on the screen. For both of these graphs, you can see large, uh, large reductions in the TSS over that first section. Um, this is due to the heavy particles being dropped out due to that initial flocculation process. This continues to slow as the sediment particles become smaller and therefore harder to drop out of suspension. Both graphs also show multiple vertical drops in TSS. This is where the runoff has theoretically come in contact with a geotextile filtration fence, uh, which has removed the suspended solids and therefore decreased the TSS. This shows that geotextile filtration fences do theoretically have the um, capabilities of removing significant amounts of suspended solids uh, from the sediment laden stormwater runoff. Again, for the in situ test, there was a large initial drop in the TSS. Uh, this is again due to the heavy particles being dropped out through that early flocculation. Both tests also show multiple vertical drops, um, as this is where it was observed that the runoff had flown into a geotextile filtration fence, again, taking away. Uh, suspended solids and decreasing that TSS. This definitely correlates with that original uh, theoretical lab tests. 
it's also important to note that the testing equipment that I had for field testing had a maximum uh, upper limit of 150 milligrams per litre. And that is why that top blue line for series one uh, does look like it's just been capped off there. Uh, it's also shown, and I'm sure you've seen, that there are increases in TSS to some of those basin sections. Unfortunately, when the sediment retention basin had finally been built, and I could get in there for some in situ testing, there were no significant rainfalls. So when it finally did rain, I had to take my opportunities and start testing. Um, there was a relatively small amount of water that flowed into the sediment retention basin. This had an overall depth of about 100 mil. And due to these low volumes in the basin, the soil particles weren't able to drop out of suspension efficiently enough. Uh, as well as this, the runoff was flowing over an unused basin bed, which still had loose particles. These loose particles were then picked up by the flow and resuspended, all contributing to an increase in TSS. The geotextiles uh, and the laminar te lab tests had reductions of up to 115 milligrams per litre. Uh, the, in the turbulent test, this went up to 125 milligrams per litre. And then this was all backed up by the in-situ tests where the geotextiles had reductions of up to 350 milligrams per litre. While these tests weren't perfect, the results show the reduction capabilities of geotextile filtration fences, indicating that the implementation of these filtration fences will reduce the, current, uh, the size of sediment retention basins. The tests that I've performed have proven to be a solid starting point, uh, but I have three main recommendations for further study. The first is the use of high-end lab equipment. This would ensure that the measurements taken are accurate and reliable, uh, while also allowing for the capture of the entire range of results. The second is the use of a lab apparatus designed by a man called Eduardo Oliveira. Um, this is just more suited to the final sediment retention basin. It's got a rectangular uh, flume and interchangeable uh, filtration filters. The last one is to have more time to wait for a significant rainfall. This is relatively easy, but as I had time constraints, and I couldn't wait around, uh, I couldn't. In conclusion, there is an obvious connection between the combination of flocculants, geotextiles, and a significant reduction in the amount of suspended solids. When comparing the geotextile filtration fence's ability to remove these suspended solids to the standalone basin sections, it is estimated that a single layer of geotextile filtration fence can re remove the same or even larger amount of uh, so, uh, solids than 200 cubic metres of open basin volume. This supports the theory of reduction in the current size of sediment retention basins, as the geotextile filtration fence only takes up even less than 10 cubic metres. The reduction in the size of these sediment retention basins uh, will, will, will reduce the initial cost and, ma and maintenance, uh, while also reducing the required dedicated area for them. This allows the basins to be placed in areas with restricted space or access, such as gullies, which are often experienced in hillside forestry, allowing for more companies to implement these sediment retention basins that utilize the ge geotextiles as their erosion and sediment control practices. Finally, I believe that there is the possibility of crafting an equation for the construction of these geotextile uh, sediment retention basins, but unfortunately, there have to be a lot more testing done. Uh, but thank you very much.